Right. Well, hello. I have the privilege today of uh, chatting with Doug Oldenburg, who's going to be the 2017 DISC instructor. I'm Lindsay Hagee. Uh, I'm one of Doug's PhD students. And so Doug is also a professor of geophysics uh, and the director of the Geophysical Inversion Facility. The course he's going to be giving is entitled Geophysical Electromagnetics, Fundamentals and Applications. And so, Doug, before we get to the course, why don't you tell us a bit about your story? Well, I'm a geophysicist at uh, UBC. I've been here forever since dinosaurs roamed the world. And uh, yeah, I'm interested in solving uh, geophysical inverse problems. And I've had a group of really brilliant graduate students over the years, and we've all been kind of focused on that very same thing. And so, uh, dinosaurs, that's a significant amount of time. Why, why dedicate a career to electromagnetics and to inversions? What captivates you with those topics? Uh, geophysics uh, is a discipline that allows you to try to see inside the Earth without actually drilling it. And if you think about it, there's a huge number of society problems that require just that, that you get some kind of a picture of what's there before you actually drill. And our goal here has always been to try to see if we could take various types of uh, geophysical surveys, uh, identify what the relevant physical property is, acquire data, and invert that to get, uh, to get good pictures. And you know, with that, we can hopefully improve you know, the quality of geophysics and help solve a lot of important problems. And so what about electromagnetics specifically? Uh, electromagnetics is really interesting because it involves three different physical properties, uh, electrical conductivity, magnetic susceptibility, and electrical permittivity. And each of those could be diagnostic in particular problems. And of those in particular, electrical conductivity has got huge applications through a variety of uh, areas in resource exploration could be minerals or water, uh, hydrocarbons in uh, environmental problems and trying to find uh, contaminant spills or saline water intrusion or in, in geotechnical. So it's there's a lot of applications out there and heretofore uh, ge electromagnetic geophysics has simply not reached the potential that it could, and that's why we're working on it. And so you and I have talked a bit about um, how much of a timely opportunity the DISC is. Could you expand on that a bit? Yeah, there's actually been quite a few things over the, over the last decade. Um, there's sort of a technical side, so the instrumentation that is now used is hugely advanced compared to what it was t 10 years ago. Uh, so whether you're acquiring data in the air, on the ground, or in, inside the earth, uh, we can now acquire large numbers of uh, really high quality data. So that's, that's the first thing, that's, that's the groundwork. The second is that there's been a lot of advances in inverse theory and methodology and, and software, uh, and that combined with high performance computing means that we can now solve Maxwell's equations quite rapidly, and hence we can tackle very large-scale inverse problems that have meaningful information about the, the geology. So that's sort of the one side, that's the technical aspect, but in uh, sort of concord with this, there's uh, a lot of development with respect to uh, open source platforms, and people are much more interested in sharing and open source, as well as uh, development of social media software and, and, and tools. So if we start to put all of these things together, the technical aspects and you know, the sort of social media type of things, uh, we can see that we have kind of a confluence of a, of a perfect storm. And it's that recognition that you, know, you see like, oh, wait a minute, electromagnetic geophysics, we're really poised to take you know, a quantum leap forward. Mm -hmm. So electromagnetics is a very big topic, and you're going to be covering both fundamentals and applications. So how are you going to do this in one day? Mm. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're right. It's kind of a big topic. Uh, and it, it is huge, and we, there's no way we can cover everything. 
the plan at, at this point is that everything is kind of going to be connected with case histories. Because case histories sort of ground you. They, they kind of tell you, okay, what is the problem that I want to do? And then we we'll use this seven step process where we begin with the problem and we kind of end with what the solution was or what the impact of the EM geophysics was. And on the way, look at you know, what kind of uh, uh, surveys were used, what kind of data we have, how they were processed, and try to kind of get a, get a bit of a picture here that is complete from using that particular case history as, as an application. And within that context, we can explore you know, fundamentals and just get you know, a much deeper appreciation for what you might expect from a geophysical survey so that you go into it with realistic expectations about how much you could, that you could see or what kinds of information you could get out of that, uh, that survey. So yeah, it's, it's going to be case histories that are the main thing. Mm -hmm. So case histories are obviously very important. And you've mentioned quite a few different applications. So everything from mineral exploration to um, hydrological problems uh, to environmental and geotechnical. So how do you plan on incorporating these into the course? Yeah, so we'll, we're, we're trying to get engagement here with the local community. In other words, if I'm going to come to your locale, so maybe you're in, in, in the Philippines, uh, you know, you've got particular kinds of problems that are important to you. So we would like to extract those problems. So we'd like you, if possible, to submit you know, a case history to us, and we put that information on our website, and we'll use that uh, in the context of the, of, of the DISC presentation. And so as uh, that is done, then that'll give us an opportunity to communicate both, you know, before and during the course, as well as the fact that once we get these case histories uh, on the website, then they'll be available for future presentations of the disk at other locations. And you know, gradually we see kind of like an interactive web and communication of people uh, that are connected with these case histories. So you've mentioned a lot with um, community and also engagement. So would you like to expand at all on what you mean by engagement in terms of the course? Yeah, so the engagement uh, follows uh, partially from this, the, the case histories, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the second aspect is that within the presentation of DISC, we have a lot of apps that are generated. So these allow people to connect uh, you know, the fundamentals of the problem with you know, the end surveys or the applications that really help you know, understand what's, what's going on. And that also will kind of promote, uh, yeah, just this, yeah, understanding and uh, what I hope is you know, classified as, as engagement. And the community aspect uh, kind of follows from the fact that everything will be on the web and you know, we hope that people can interact with, you know, with that material and talk to other people, find out how to program something or how to you know, answer or address some particular problem. Mm -hmm. And so as a uh, potential participant, what, what would you hope the takeaways would be? I think the biggest thing is that I, I would like you to be able to, when you're confronted with any geoscience problem, to see if electromagnetic geophysics could potentially play a role. So are those three physical properties kind of connected with, 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 with your problem? And if they are, that you would have some idea about you know, what kind of surveys to use, uh, what you might expect and how it might be appropriately used. I, I think that's important for you as a practicing geoscientist. It's also important for people who you know, are in managerial positions and you know, have this need to make a decision about whether a particular geophysical survey should, should be used. So 
those would be fundamental objectives. And then the other is that because we're using this disk and all the resources as, as a catalyst, it might open up a lot of resources, both technical that are on the web, as well as interactive with respect to a community, so that you could you know, work with other people and resources to help solve your problem. Wonderful. Well, thanks for your time, Doug. Look forward to DISC 2017. Uh, and we'll be keeping geosci.xyz up to date uh, with more information on the DISC. Just follow the link to DISC 2017. Thanks. Thank you.